much indeed for joining us. Look, we know that um, Mr Sunak and Jeremy Hunt are, are like, taking all the credit for, for the, the falls in inflation now, which I say that with a pinch of sword as well, because it's a joint effort across the board. But, but these are uncomfortable figures. We would love to see the wages coming off a little bit so that the Bank of England could have more confidence that it can cut interest rates earlier than later as well. Just how would you typify the latest figures? Well, look, great to be with you. First of all, thanks for having me on your show. It's always a pleasure. I think the first thing to say is that we've got, again, rising real wages, which is important for British people across, uh, across all parts of the country. If you look at what we're doing in the Treasury, we've cut national insurance contributions uh, and we're, ra we're increasing the national living wage. So we're putting more money in people's pockets and now we're seeing real wages increase, uh, which will benefit everybody. But clearly, we are still not out of the woods when it comes to inflation. We've gone from a peak of 11% <coughs> down to 3.4%, but we still have food inflation at 5%. So we're not complacent whatsoever. We have to work, as you said, with the Bank of England, with our central bank, who have the principal lever, which is monetary policy, to ensure that we don't, A, exacerbate inflation, uh, but B, that we are able to pull policy levers which help complement the work of the Bank of England. This is going to be problematic for the autumn election. I mean, it, if it, it's not going to be May now, we don't think. Obviously, they, they've got the local elections. But let, let's just work on the assumption. You're not going to tell me, so I'm not going to ask. We, we'll work on the assumption that we have an autumn election as well. As is the case in the United States with their November election as well, and you know this from your time in the city and your time as a politician, it's very difficult for central banks to cut rates at the same time as a general election or a presidential election as well. That's going to make it more problematic if the central bank, the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, has to wait longer. And that's going to be harder for the feel-good factor for the government to actually say to the constituents... Um, actually, we are getting rates down as well. It's going to be very problematic, the timing, isn't it? Look, we've always been clear the key priority for the government is to get inflation down. That's why we've got very high interest rates um, compared to historic you levels. you taking too much credit for it when it's actually the Bank of England's job? You just mentioned they have the key policy lever. Not at all. I think, look, if you look at what the IMF have said, we've got the spring meetings this week. The Chancellor's about to, to leave for, for New York and Washington uh, today. They have said that the British government has taken decisive action to bear down on inflation for the two reasons that I said. One, we're not exacerbating in, uh, inflation. We've had to take some really difficult decisions like on public sector pay, for example. Uh, but secondly, there are policy levers that we have pulled, which the OBR, who adjudicate our uh, figures and our budgets, have said will reduce headline inflation. So if you take our energy price guarantee, last year we were effectively paid 50% of people's energy bills, the OBR were very clear that that would knock about 2% off CPI. So I think I would push back slightly and just, you know, definitely refer you to the IMF, but point to the fact that we have had to take some difficult decisions. We've supported the Bank of England and we've pulled policy levers to get inflation down. That has worked. We're down from 11% of a peak down to 34 projected to go back to target this year.